Hey, what's happening, Champion Squad? Welcome your beautiful faces back to another video. And today, we're going to be learning how to approach gunfights when you're playing solo. And you guys are probably wondering, what is he talking about? He has a teammate right there. What a liar. But we'll get to that in just a second. So here we can hear some shots over in Skulltown. This is my rotation right to Skulltown to see if I can get some easy cleanup kills. And I notice from a distance, I can see the enemy standing still right there. I start walking my way in. So as soon as they scanned me, I immediately went for height. I made all the noise possible. It didn't matter at that point since they knew I was there. And as soon as I get the opportunity to distress the situation, figure out where these enemies are. At the moment, they're both hiding because they knew I'm coming and I heard one reload behind this bin. So right now I don't want to full send. I'm still keeping my distance. Go for the attack. And that's exactly when I saw both of them now. So now I know it's two people. They have good shots. They just cracked me right there. Also notice when I took this battery, you never really want the enemy tagging you flesh. When they start tagging you flesh, that gives them a little more confidence and more times than not, it will cause them to make a headless push, a push that shouldn't have happened. So make sure you're topping on your armor before you get cracked, especially when you're solo. But let's take positioning and put it aside for a quick second and let's actually assess the situation. Right now we have one Bloodhound and then we also had a Valkyrie, which she Valk tagged me. And we have the Bloodhound scan, so I know exactly what I'm fighting up against. The Bloodhound, I'm not too worried about. He can't really get to me that quickly. He needs to climb up, take his time. The Valkyrie, on the other hand, is going to be lethal. And if they're smart enough, they should be able to time a coordinated push on me, where while the Bloodhound is climbing, the Valkyrie is going to try and fly up, and they pinch together. That's their best move to eliminate me or to make me very low in this situation. And I read that immediately. And once I got the bat off, I knew the Bloodhound was very close. I can hear the water underneath me. I also hear the Valkyrie flying around. So at this moment, I flew and took ultimate height. And what that's going to do in this situation is single out the Valkyrie. If she wants to push me, that's the only player that can actually get to me. And that gives me a fair 1v1. Look out, grenade. That was literally almost perfect. While I was actually playing this, I was mind blown on how I didn't knock the Valkyrie. But the zone did just close. And with the new season update, they actually increased the damage of the storm. It takes more during all of the rings. But even if this update wasn't out, this Valkyrie is going to go down. There's no way she's going to get a syringe off with the amount of health she had. She was about 10 HP, if that. And there it is. Knocked to zone. I hear a heat shield. So that's a potential res that's going to happen very soon. So I need to capitalize. Wings up. Bloodhound got the res off. Here's the Valkyrie. She's going to be one shot. As I walked into this, my main focus should have been the Valkyrie. That's an easy insta re -knock, And then I have a fair 1v1. But this Bloodhound did a phenomenal job of body blocking this Valkyrie. I didn't see where she was. She was tucked in the corner. Bloodhound has a PK up in my face and make me force the fight on them instead of the Valkyrie, which was a great play in his part. And something to keep in mind that I do here, which is insta crank a med kit. I'm taking this med kit, even though I have about 50 HP left, it's only ring one. I'm taking this med kit right away because it's a storm fight. Whenever you're fighting in storm, making sure you're paying attention to your health and always cap up on the health first. Unless you have around 75 or more HP, I would not worry about cranking a battery in a storm fight. Make sure you get that med kit off first or a couple of syringes, then start healing your armor up. And with this Valkyrie right here, she's actually running to me, trying to find where I'm at, what I'm doing, She's wasting time while I'm getting this heal off. Recharging shields. She's still thinking that I'm going to push in, in this situation, but I'm going to full heal and play it the safe approach. So I immediately take height, take another cell. Doesn't res, so as soon as I reload both of my guns, I take another cell. Cap up fully. And as soon as I get that last cell off, 
the Valkyrie now climbed up. Here she is. But since I took height in this situation and sort of forced her to make the move, she either had to res or push me in this situation. She elected to push. I have the better positioning. And I also have a semi head glitch here. See this cover right here? If I crouch, I'm sort of behind some cover. So she has a very tough shot to shoot at me. If I was in her case, I would have took the cover right behind that little block there and crouched and then took the fight against me. But she's out in the open. So a bad move there. Not a bad move for Chowling, but a bad move on the positioning on her part. And here we find ourselves in the third gunfight of the game. But this time I am walking up on a nice little third party. Play the range of your weapons that you have on. Right now, I'm running the 301 car. So this 301 with a three times is really going to keep me at a massive benefit when it comes to range like this. So you want to keep your distance. Don't full send right away. Figure out what's going on. And that's going to help you capitalize on any openings that appear for you. And for me, in my case, it was the little rampart on the second floor here. Got a nice little one mag on her. Peek around more, get some good shots off Ryzen, end up cleaning that squad up. So as soon as I wipe that one squad, now I know that there was three total in the area, but now there's two left because this squad here is still shooting at whoever's down here. This squad that's down here, I'm not sure if that's a full team or not, but always play it like it is. You never know until you know. So again, I'm still keeping distance. And especially when you're soloing, you want to sort of feel out the enemy team. You want to shoot at them, see what kind of shot they have, banter around, and seeing if you can get a knock at range first. When you play like this, this gives you a second option. God forbid they do get the better of the exchange on you. Then you can back up. You have the time to do it and create even more distance if you need to. Here's when I actually started to get a little more aggressive on this left side team. And at the back of my head, I was thinking about actually pushing this team by the truck. I got some decent damage off the lifeline. I noticed this player's knocked here. Then I realized that this knock player could be a part of this team down here. And in this general area, there is absolutely no cover. So if I'm caught out in the open here, there's no second chances. There's no escaping, especially with Valkyrie. So when you are solo, no matter the legend that you're playing, unless maybe I guess you can say Wraith or Pathfinder, you need to play a more passive approach, a more slower approach, a more calculated approach, and only full sending when you know what's happening in that situation. When I went to peak and started shooting, I'm like, wait, what? They got the res already? So that was shocking. Managed to get the re-knock and get some great damage off Watson. And that's going to enable me to push up a little bit more and cover some more ground on this team. This time I made sure to get the thirst also. <laughs> Knock in the res again. And now the other two-man team is actually fighting the Watson now. So she's in a 2v1, probably going to go down. And yep, I think she just died right there. So Watson's eliminated. I heard somebody to my right down low. Could it be another team? Potentially. I know there's a full two-man team still up in front of me. I'm in zone. It's ring three. It's going to tick very hard, especially with the new update. And it was at this point, I just need a Valk out. If I wasn't playing Valkyrie, I'd probably go around this way to zone. Or even just wide left. Going through that cut though, that choke spot, go through it. And then either going straight wide left or cutting in even short and hitting the development and taking the fight at the development. Look at this. We have a full team. So it was a two-man team. They probably came out of this little bunker factory there. And then we also have the original team that's right here in the choke spot. I made the perfect play to escape the situation right there and then. But here's where things get very interesting because this two-man team 
probably doesn't know that this two-man team is here so they're probably expecting me either to take this development and in the back of my head i was thinking about landing at the top of that roof there but i second guessed myself because they were sort of a very aggressive squad they were trying to shoot me out of storm while in a valkyl so i thought if i land on the roof here they're gonna push me no matter what they're just gonna full send it right away plus i also have to take a med kit if you look at my health I'm already down 50 HP. I'm still not even in safe zone. So at this point, I decided to fly into safe zone away from both of these teams. And here's where I thought of a quick plan. We're going to land here. We're taking the Wraith Labs portal and go back. Because I know that there was two teams there and they're going to fight. So I can come up on a nice little third party without them even knowing. They thought it completely left the situation, but guess what? We're coming back. And there we go. They're fighting out in the distance there. I start pinging them. And at this point, they're already too invested to even worry about me or even look at me. And they are running away. Hey, and that's fine with me. I'm just going to go ahead and take all of the loot from that area and then play zone. So as I make it to the next safe zone, this is the squad that actually ran away. So when I originally saw that squad, it was right around this area. And they just wide wrapped all the way around through here. And if we look at how many squads are left, two other squads besides me are left. I need to figure out where this other squad is and if they're a full team or not. Because in most situations, when it comes down to sort of the last two to three squads, they're already pre-planned, listening for that fight to go down to third party it right away. Well, it looks like that squad wants none of me. So it's a Rampart Caustic team bunker down in that house. Am I pushing that? Absolutely not. Guess what? We're going back. We're taking some cover, ripping the Valkyl, and getting out of this situation. I'm nowhere near the zone, so this Valkyl is going to come huge for that. But it's also going to let me know where this next squad is, or the final squad, should I say. And there they are. Look at this squad. They're just standing in spot, in place. I literally thought when I was landing here, I thought they weren't playing. So that's why when I peeked, I was very cautious, making sure they're not doing anything tricky. And they were. Vantage, pre-aiming me. Octane doing the same thing. And they get the first shot off me. So that's 50 damage. If you guys don't know what that Vantage Ultimate, which is the sniper, first shot that hits you is 50. Then it goes to 100. So now that she has that first shot on me, I need to play even more cautiously because the next shot's going to hit hard. Now, the second angle that I actually take, I now know it's an Octane and a Vantage. And guess what? Both of them can take height. So even though my approach to this fight was very good, I'm in the prime positioning possible, I still need to play this very cautious no matter how good they are because they can both instantly send me. So again, when you're approaching squads, man down or solo, assess the situation, figure out who you're fighting up against and go from there. And I was only able to knock that vantage is because this Octane dropped down, split himself from the team, and tried to pad up. So it was a good play they were trying to make, but the way I capitalized right away was to single out the vantage when I have the opportunity to. When they were both on top of height here, I wasn't peeking as often or basically peeking for a long period of time. But since the Octane dropped down, no longer has a gunfight angle until he pads up on me. So again, get the knock off the vantage. Now it's pretty much smooth sailing. I can look down. Octane's down there. I don't know what happened with the pad. If he missed it, I think he hit it, but it, he didn't go up. The easy shot straight down low with the three times. Managed to clean him. And that's a squad wipe. And guess what? We already know what that other squad is. That's the Costa Grandpart team. 
they were bunkered down and now they made their way up to me already that quick because i'm telling you guys when there's like two to three squads left in the game if you're trying to win it you need to make sure you know where these other squads are located because they have in the back of their head i'm going to third party this for the easy win that's what everyone thinks when it's like the last two squads left so making sure you're on your toes and prepare for that push right away get some good shots off caustic there is it sendable? Probably not. I go for a different angle. And almost cracked the rampart. So now they're almost both cracked. In this situation, I could actually send. It wouldn't be a bad push. But since I'm playing and have that solo mindset and that solo feel where I can only push if I know for sure I can clean it up, that's how you have to play these fights when you're solo. You can't take as much risk because again, one error is going to cost the whole game. And right now we have a beautiful game. We have eight kills, 2,500 damage. So we're pushing 3K. We're looking really good right now. I decided to play up on the top pipes again, so I flew back up, uh, only because it's a safer approach. Right here, you can see I have a beautiful cover, little head glitch right here. I can shoot down on them. They don't have the best angles on me. And if they do have me low, they cannot get up here. But it doesn't favor me in getting a one mag from here. Although I have some great positioning and angles, it's not the angles I'm looking for to get a one mag. Here, I did some decent damage off that rampart. Yeah, 50-60. But if I'm playing right here on this edge, my angles looking down this way will have a much better chance of getting a one mag than if I'm looking down from where I'm at right now. Also, pay attention to my health. I am not really letting myself get down to flesh or even touching my flesh. Round five is about to close. I'm getting off the damage I can get off. They are not in the best spot at all because they do have to push up just a little bit, but they do have the rampart. So they can have some portable cover on the way. And not only did we have some great examples of some 1v2s, but we also covered some tips on how to have a solo mindset, how to have that sort of passive aggressive approach to gunfights and only investing when it's in your favor. If you found anything helpful in this video, don't forget to leave a like rating. It's always appreciated. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe, join the champion squad for some more valuable content, and I will catch you guys in the next video.